All right, so there's been a frequent amount of questions coming through to us through multiple sources of media, uh, social media on the internet, I'm meaning. Um, basically, everyone or a lot of people want to know what our diet is. Now, this could be referring to bulking, cutting, they, they want to know these specifics and what we've been eating or what we do to uh, get in shape. Basic questions like, oh, how much should I eat? Like, I want to eat yeah. this much weight. Like, yeah. is this food bad? <clears throat> is this food good? Good. Things like that. Right then and there. Um, bad and good food. Now, see, a lot of people have this misconception that, like, salad is better than pizza. That's simply not true. A one specific food cannot be classified as either a good food or a bad food. You simply, you can't, you can't do that. You can't say one food is bad or one food is good. You could judge an overall diet or let's say an overall day of eating as good or bad, yes. but a specific food, you can't do that. Yes, it, it, it all comes into the volume of the food you're eating. Like you, if you're eating like 18 slices of pizza, I mean like that's probably not good. You're probably going over your fat, your fat intake for the day. Not getting your micros, not yeah, getting your vegetables, yeah, yeah, exactly. not that. You're probably overloaded on calories and pizza and you're getting no nutrients and fucking loaded up in fat. Here's how this works. This is the absolute, absolute bare basics. Now, we're obviously going to elaborate on this. If a person wants to gain weight, they have to find out what their caloric maintenance is, and they need to eat more than that. The general saying is about 500 calories over your maintenance. No matter what foods you eat, no matter where your calories come from, if you're getting a surplus of calories over your maintenance in a given day, you will gain weight for that day, no matter what the food is. And vice versa, no matter where your calories come from, if you're in a caloric deficit, meaning that you're eating less calories than your body needs per day to maintain its weight, you're mm -hmm. going to lose weight. And I don't care if you're eating straight McDonald's, Coca-Cola, brownies, cookies, the most sugary, most disgusting, dirty foods. If you're in a caloric deficit, no matter what you eat, you're going to gain weight. And same thing for the caloric surplus. Yes, a, a calorie is a calorie no matter where you get it from. It's a unit of energy. And McDonald's fast food, like he said, it, you can't really label it as unhealthy or these, these types of things. It's, it's how you fit it in your diet, that it's your overall diet that can make it unhealthy. But um, like talking in a sense of like micros and macros. Now, like some of you may have questions of what is macronutrients? What is micronutrients? Well, we'll start with this. Macronutrients. The macronutrients are protein, fat, and carbs. Carbs has four mm -hmm. calories per gram, protein has four calories per gram, and fat has nine calories per gram, right? And fat's obviously twice, pretty much twice, yes. it's calorically dense. Now, you'll come into micronutrients. Micronutrients is vitamins and minerals. Now, although this isn't essential for body composition, it's still important in overall health. Your body composition is essentially your muscle to fat ratio and how you look. So, let's say you're on a, you're in an optimal training program to gain mass, right? So what do you do? You're going to be eating a caloric surplus. So you're training very optimally and you're eating a caloric surplus. Now, let's say that surplus, your macros are 80% fat, 10% carbs, and 10% protein. Just because you're eating a caloric surplus, you are going to gain weight no matter what, but what kind of weight you're going to gain, obviously you're not getting nearly enough protein for muscle protein synthesis, yeah. so you're not building any muscle, you're getting an obscene amount of fat, yeah. not that much of it can be transferred, like converted to glucose, so you're kind of fucked on that, and the amount of carbs that you're getting, you can forget about having a good workout, forget about your energy, yeah. you're going to feel horrible, so your body composition is going to look like shit. Yeah. Now, what's a more optimal way? Getting the the amount of protein you need, so the bare minimum because you're bulking, so let's say like, speaking very roughly, a gram of protein per pound of lean yeah, body mass. Yeah, if you can do that, now like not everyone can, but in a bulk, protein isn't as essential, but you can aim for that. Yeah, so in a protein, and when you're bulking, you essentially, you can get the bare minimum protein requirements, just that when you're cutting and you're in a caloric yeah. deficit, that's when protein important. becomes more yeah. important. But when you're bulking, a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, general saying, some people could say 0.8, some people could say 1.2, we're just going to say a pound per loop. A gram per pound of lean body mass, right? Eat as many carbs as you possibly can that you could fit in and keep your carb and keep your fat at a healthy level. Yeah, and, that's, yeah. and that's a general good way to bowl. And healthy level of fat, I, like personally how I run it is about like 0.5 grams of fat per pound of uh, body weight. 
but like right around there is, is manageable, still healthy, and it won't affect body composition. Micronutrients, which are the vitamins and minerals that come in your food, right? They do not affect body composition, but they're extremely, extremely vital towards your health. So what's the point of training and getting a nice body and being aesthetic if, if you're like if you're unhealthy? So yeah. you can also feel very lethargic from not eating uh, important vitamins and minerals or vitamins and minerals throughout the day, uh, and workouts could be shitty. So like they indirectly affect your workouts and your body composition. If you have shitty workouts, crappy workouts because you're low on whatever vitamins you need for that day, it's going to hinder gains. You can't move as much weight, you feel weaker, you don't want to work out as hard, and all this. So it does come into play, but it's not direct with how big you'll get. People have this misconception that like if you eat broccoli, um, uh, brown boiled rice, chicken. yeah, or boiled chicken, all this crap that like, oh, you'll get huge, this and that. It's about the calories, the macros. If you're trying to bulk, right, and you don't have a good appetite like me, you should stay away from the quote unquote lean foods or clean foods because they're not calorie dense. Yeah. They have a bunch of fiber in them. Mm -hmm. Fiber suppresses your appetite, makes you feel really full, mm -hmm. so they're just not optimal. If you're just eating super, super, super clean, you're going to have an extremely, extremely difficult time pounding in those mm -hmm. calories that you need to grow and be a surplus. We're not saying don't eat these foods. There's nothing wrong with these foods. It's just a small tip, a little piece of advice that we're giving because you don't need to go that route. It's going to make it more difficult for certain individuals that have low appetites, which is people like me and I'm sure other people out there. So you would want to eat extremely calorie dense foods. Just make sure that yes. you're, getting you get in, you're getting all your micros in, getting all your micros in, two servings of fruits and vegetables a day, get a multivitamin just to cover all that. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you're getting enough fiber and like things like oatmeal and have a lot of fiber. A lot of the multivitamins on the market right now, they come in the form of compressed yes. pills. To my knowledge, compressed pills only have a 10% bioavailability. So all those fancy nice vitamins that are on the label, like you're not you're not getting any Yeah, they can they can write out whatever whatever they want on their study. They can they can put they can they can word things in such specific ways, but when it comes down to it, compressed pills may not be as bioavailable. That's why the multivitamin that we take, that you may have seen in our previous vlogs, all the vitamins in there are in official suspension, so they're way more bioavailable, making it it's easier to multivitamin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you obviously don't want to solely rely on your multivitamin to get all your vitamins. Get your fruits, get your vegetables, that's most important. You just want multivitamins to just kind of cover your bases. In case you didn't miss anything, it can make up. Try not to get one that's compressed pills. Yeah. I'm going to talk about my dad. <laughs> Here's my diet approach, right? My diet is pretty much relatively stress free. I don't use apps like my fitness to count my calories, count my macros, things like that. I just kind of comment that's just eyeball things. So when I'm eating throughout the day, I'll just make sure, like, I'll keep, I'll be like very aware of how much like protein I'm getting, and I just want to roughly keep my, or I want to get like I don't know, like maybe 170, 180 grams, whatever. How, how aim much? for a goal. Aim for a goal. So I just, I'll just keep an eye. All right, like I have. It'll get to a certain point of the day and I'll be like, okay, I've had roughly this much protein, that means I need this much more, or I'll be, I've had a lot of protein, that means I don't really need that much left, I don't have that much left, or oh, I really didn't eat enough, I should probably like pound down, two, like pound, down, pound down two scoops away. So first I'll make sure I'm getting enough protein, and I eat as much carbs as I possibly can. I don't have a caloric limit, I'll eat as much as I possibly can. And the fats, they just fall into place for me. I don't really worry about them. Just the foods I eat, they have plenty of fat, I'm fine. So I, I pretty much don't count fat. I get plenty of it. So make sure I get my protein, as many carbs as I can shove in my mouth, and just have the fats fall into place. So I'm never really counting calories and doing anything like that. I'm just pretty much eating wherever I want. And also, one of my like flaws in my diet, I don't get enough fruits and vegetables in like I'm re recommending to you guys. Like I've recognized this and I'm trying to improve on this. I'm trying to have a consistent regimen where I'm getting two servings of fruits and two servings of vegetables in. That's something that I have personally need to improve on. So I'm just not doing that. For instance, um, there are certain macronutrients are more bioavailable than others. Like take protein for example. Yeah, whey protein. Whey like, protein is considered to be like the most bioavailable yes. protein that you can possibly get. It, it you can um you can eat, you can get protein from other sources, but how whey protein is made created, it's just easier to absorb. So it's, I think 
to my knowledge, I think soy protein is not really that no. bioavailable. But let's say you need, for your goals, you need 100 grams of protein a day. If you take 100 grams of whey protein a day, I'm not telling you to do this, but I'm saying in this hypothetical scenario, you'll be good. That's extremely mm -hmm. good bioavailable protein. Let's say those 100, in, let's say in this other scenario, those 100 grams of protein are from one extremely low bioavailable source, such as, I don't know, soy. Then just because you're getting 100 grams, of protein, that's what it says on the label. That doesn't mean you're actually getting all of it absorbed. That doesn't mean it's optimally bioavailable. That's why you want to keep an eye on where your protein sources are coming from. So, we've covered essentially a bulking type diet right there. Now, like some of you may want to cut. Now, we don't recommend beginners really cutting. It's more about eating Especially if you're a teenager. Yeah, especially if you're a teenager, it really uh, can mess up your hormones and you're really developing. And it's, it's, you don't need to at that point. I know everyone wants to get shredded, look good, this and that, but trust me, you build muscle, you, you bulk, you, you don't even need to heavy extreme surplus bulk, but you can eat in a caloric surplus. You can read comments actually. Yeah. When I go through phases where I lose my appetite, when I'm sick and I simply like, with all my willpower, I can't get the calories in that I need and I'm in a caloric deficit, like 2,000 calories a day, I do get really shredded. I can't take really nice pictures. I look pretty good, but I feel awful. Like my workouts just, they feel awful. And I'm not pain. strong at all. You just have this sense of emptiness. Like, no matter how much pre-workout you take, you just don't feel the same. You can't progress. Mm -hmm. You can't, you're not pretty, you're not really gaining any muscle, so it sucks. That's why I would never want to go on a cut right now. Maybe when I'm older and I really want to lean down for something important, then I would purposely do it. But right now, my mentality, bulk, bulk, bulk. That's how it's been since day one. If you do choose to cut, with some reason to cut if you've been training for a long enough time, you're preparing for a competition, etc. Um, you've already heard our reasons we don't recommend cutting for younger people. But if you do choose to cut, there are methods that we follow for a cut. I mean, specifically over the summer, I did have a small cut. I ran, ran it for about like four months, see what I could do. Um, basically, you don't want to drop your calories too fast. You, you kind of want to progressively drop them throughout uh, week increments, um, about 400 calories a week, 200 calories depending, until you hit a goal calorie. What I did specifically is I was eating about 5,000 calories in my bulk uh, in January. Yeah. Myron. <laughs> um, from there, I wanted to cut January, March, April. I wanted to cut in April. So I started dropping my calories 400 a week until I hit around 3,000. Right around April that happened. From there, I dropped my calories 400 more for the first week. The second week, dropped it 200. Third week, dropped it 200 more, held that for two weeks. Right around May or June, I should have been around 2,000 calories. Uh, from there, I held it at 2,000 for two weeks and then dropped it to 1,800 for a week. I ended up going from 197 to 168, very lean. Um, when you're eating that many <clears throat> calories, you gotta go to the gym with the mentality of a yes. lion. It's yes. bad, yes. it sucks. Um, I'll tell you, like at first I didn't really feel the effects because like in the beginning of the cut, like your, your body's still used to eating normally. So but, no, but like, let's say let's say you're bulking, <coughs> let's say you're bulking, right? And for whatever reason, for like one or two days, you're like in a severe caloric deficit. You yeah. can't get that many calories. You'll be completely fine. You won't notice anything in your workout for those like small a few days that that happens. But eventually, it builds a cut. Like, yeah, it's it starts to So when you're cutting, right? Your first week of cutting, oh wow, like I feel really good in the gym, right? Then after a while, when you're just depleted. Cool. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> so that's when pre-workout becomes very essential in my diet. But then. Even later on, it just comes to the point where you just take pre-workout, yeah. and you come in, you'll feel super buzz stimulated, but you just don't have that strength. Yeah, you have this like sense of energy. energy. And you can tell, and that's, and that's, why, that's why it's crazy how much eating depends on, or, or eating controls our performance in the gym. Mm -hmm. Like if we have a crappy day of eating the day before our training, we're probably not gonna have a good training day. And people underestimate mm -hmm. the diet so much. The diet is so Yes. So important. Uh, I, I've seen, I, I see guys in my gym all the time. I've, I've seen them there for years. They literally look exactly same. the same. They're training pretty hard, but something has, something has to be off their diet. That's all I can think of. 80% diet. If, you're, if your diet's not right, I'm talking like deficit surpluses, like macros, all that stuff, I'm generalizing. If your diet's off, 
It doesn't matter what you do in the gym, you're gonna plateau super fast. Yes. Yes. You're just gonna look the same. So basically, if you wanna improve fast, and fast is, is um, still not as fast as you would like it to be, but if you still wanna improve at a good pace and develop a good body, you can't worry about getting shredded right away. You can't get, you can't build muscle and lose fat. That's going to take way too long. We recommend eating in a surplus for what, you'd say like two years, uh, depending on how much size you get, everyone gains. Depending on your penis yeah. starting yeah. out. Yeah. If you're yeah. morbidly obese, yeah, then yeah you should come into a cup mm -hmm. and you come in, it's different. If you're like anywhere, if you're like, I don't know, like maybe a 10 to 20% body fat around there, like 10 to like 18, like those ranges, that's a completely healthy range. Yeah. And you might you might be con like you might be considered fat yeah. body right. terms with all this body dysmorphic, but that's not bad at all. It's a healthy range. It's a good Just range. Build muscle from there. Build muscle. Trust me, it, it, it it's so much more efficient in the, in the long run. And you'll fall in love with training. Yes. If you start training yes. and you're in a deficit, um, it, it, it sucks, it. dude. It sucks bad, <laughs> real bad. Like I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. So basically, we encourage eating a lot, but of course you have to get your uh, vitamins and minerals in, micronutrients, and get your calories in. Calories, 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 calories. Protein, I mean, it's important, but it shouldn't be the main focus of your diet. It's, you should be worrying about your calories, but track your macros as well. You don't have to be super strict about it, but at least learn your ranges. If your stomach's the size of a fist like mine and you have a minuscule appetite, you're going to have to find some sneaky cheat code foods with lots and lots of calories in there to get you all your calories in. Like, for me, it's Biscoff bagels, it's Brutz Wars and like noodles and like muffins. sauce, muffins, mm. crazy things like that. Very, very, um, I'd say like something that, that it's easily digested, something real quick. Mm. Like, my, like my breakfast right now consistently is a bunch of oats. A bunch of brown sugar and Nutella. Yeah. It's like a thousand calories, but it has a good amount of fiber and blood. Mm -hmm. A lot of calories and a lot of sugar. Water. <laughs> Dude, I'm tired. I'm tired. Last thing, water. Go. A lot of people don't know the benefits of water, such as eating more. You drink a lot of water, keeps your stomach expanded. Although you're not really taking in any calories, you're keeping your stomach expanded like, after meals. Like the, like the prep, like I'm pretty sure like pro eaters. Yeah. I like eat a lot of food. They'll like, for like one or two days, I think, before they're actually eating competition, they don't eat any food. They just drink obscenely large amounts of water just to like keep their stomach expanded and make them like, make, essentially starve themselves. So when the day of the eating comes, it's like huge shove it on your face if you're so hungry. Water also has the benefit of improving hydration. Better workouts, you feel better. You can if you're taking weight. creatine. Oh, big point. Helps out creatine a lot too. Moves it throughout your body. Get you going. Increases ATP in your big muscles. Oh. I remember the first time I started taking creatine, five grams a day, and I heard that you used to drink a lot of water, so I would just make sure I would have gallons of water with me at all times. And in one week, I went from like 130 pounds to 137 pounds. I got <laughs> so much stronger. Everyone worries about creatine. Stop worrying about yeah, creatine. It's really Go online, buy the biggest tub of creatine monohydrate that you could possibly find as soon as it comes in the mail. Take five grams every single day, never think about it again for the rest of your life, and drink a lot of water. Just do it. It's, it's not that important to worry about. It's, Just do it. Yeah. You'll thank me later. My camera's probably fucking big right now. It's oh, so yeah. hot. Alright, and if there's any questions that you would like us to answer, that we didn't cover, I'm assuming we covered most, but everyone still has questions. Comment below, we will both do our best to respond, we will respond, because that's what this video was about. So, thank you for watching, subscribe, comment, like, share your friends, share, show your grandma, this video, sell to your neighbor, put it on your like, TV screens, hand it out to kids at school. Shoot!